Hey, good afternoon gardeners. This is Ed Frolish with the First Time Gardener. I'm bringing you back for an update on my garden. Today is October 26th and it's been um, a while since I've given you an update and things are looking pretty good in the garden so I'm excited to take you down there and show you uh, what's going on today. So if this is your first time on my channel, hey, welcome. Thank you for uh, tuning in and watching this. Uh, for you subscribers that have been with me since the beginning, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Hopefully you guys are going to be sharing my channel with uh, your friends and other gardeners and stuff. And lets us uh, help us grow this uh, channel a little bigger than we have. All right, so let's uh, start. We're going to go over here to our right, um, which is our last latest thing that we've planted, which is the spinach kale uh, collards and stuff. And take a look at that and see how that's coming along. So guys, this is the area that I showed you that we lost the footage when we actually planted and I just brought you down and told you what was going on. But right now, this is our collards. The large ones that you see right here are collard greens. And they're looking really good. Um, they're striving pretty well. Um, this row right here is our spinach. Um, my first planting that I did, I only gotten two. I got this plant over here and this plant here who has just gotten ate up by the bugs. They didn't look very good. So I replanted a whole row and you can see, you can see this row here coming. I finally starting to get some more over there, but I heard spinach is a bear to grow or at least to start. So hopefully, <clears throat> hopefully that'll get a little better uh, once they um, come up a little bit. I'm going to um, let them grow another couple days and I'm going to hit them with some fish emulsion, um, which give a light um, fertilizing of nitrogen to help those leaves uh, start taking off. So anyway. Um, the biggest thing we eat out of here are collards and, and kale. Um, that's our two biggest things that we use the most out of the garden. And here is another row of kale going, going right down there. And I planted these. These are probably two weeks behind these here when I planted these. Now these were started from seed. I put seed in here. These were seeded in a grow tray that I transplanted. And in an earlier video, you you saw that I transplanted those. So that's why they're so much bigger. And then this is my row of kale right here. And those are all started from seed too. Right behind us is our green beans. Ah, they're kind of hit and miss. We did, uh, <clears throat> we've gotten three dinners uh, so far from from there but they're getting all kinds of worms like these cut leaf worms they're causing havoc you can see that I don't know if you can see that little worm right there see that little worm I think they call it a cut worm but that little thing right there has been wreaking havoc on my leaves um, and then I got some sort of looks like blight or something that's got on there but I'm still getting a few um, green beans I picked a few yesterday to go with our dinner so I don't have a whole lot <clears throat> I don't have a whole lot and then now I'm getting this too where the green beans are starting to grow and then they're dying they're turning yellow so I'm thinking these things are probably done here I got a, I got a green bean right here but I'm going to let them grow for another couple weeks, see what happens. Um, and if, uh, if they keep getting worse, then I'm just going to rip them out of the ground. Um, I'm going to redo this whole bed into something, either that. I might even put a cover crop in here, just wait till spring and maybe not plant anything else here. Um, I'm very undecisive of what, what I do and when I do it. And, if I change my mind, I change my mind a lot from uh, one thing I'm gonna do to then I do something different. But anyway, here's our potatoes. They're doing really well. 
we got beat up today with some wind so they're kind of like leggy and laying over um, <clears throat> uh, so far none of the stems have snapped so that's good um, I've got to try to uh, hill these back up again and see if uh, if it's even worth at this point trying to hill them because they're so big um, but yeah I'm going to try to hill them some get them a little protected um, from the winds and stuff so they don't break so a lot of people I watch tell me that these things and their um, growth cycle before they just start growing some potatoes get um, flowers and buds <clears throat> I have never I've grown potatoes this is my third or fourth time growing potatoes I have yet to um, see anything bloom as far as a flower goes but we do get plenty of potatoes so I'm assuming it doesn't have to bloom in order to get potatoes we still get potatoes but I see a lot of other videos that they show it's a, and it's a really pretty flower that they get on but so far I haven't seen any on mine so that's <clears throat> that's that oh and then we got our new grow table um, I have a video up on building this it's a DIY video to let you um, show how we built this that so you can build it at home um, I did it step by step told you all the measurements all the wood you need and everything and we put it together and um, well because of the videotaping everything it probably took about five hours to film everything and put the video out but uh, if you're just uh, gung-ho and get this thing done get all the wood cut you could probably put this thing together in about two hours but here's our um, here's our other potatoes that we got going in our buckets um, this is the one that all three came up that's a little dry I'm gonna I'm gonna get ready to water the garden here in a minute but um, this is the bucket that all three uh, potatoes grew this is my red bucket we never did get any of the other two to come up um, but the one that is up is doing pretty well um, and then these are my other two buckets that I planted you saw them in the video they were empty at the time I had just purchased them so I did grow some stuff in them or I'm growing stuff so here I have some um, sugar snap peas and they've been in for a few days now they're just just starting to come up right here right there you can you can see that and I had one right here see got a couple I got an ant running around here I'm just seeing uh, so anyway they're hopefully they're coming up um, now these are going to be a trellis type so where the sign is I didn't plant anything back here so I can stick a trellis piece in there and come up however tall and I'm gonna let them grow on the trellis um, and the reason being is I want to see how these peas do because I have a, a whole package of them and I only planted this bucket so come spring if these do well and we get a few off and I like the taste of them um, we're gonna plant the rest of it uh, probably in an earth garden somewhere or in one of our raised beds so this is kind of just a testing of whether I like them or not <clears throat> and then these two buckets here <clears throat> are gold potatoes golden potatoes I planted um, they're they're only in the ground less than a week so they're not shooting up yet uh, I don't see anything popping through the ground all right let's go over to our brassicas they're doing really good that's probably the best of the garden so far so here you have our broccoli and it is doing good and I don't know if you remember when they were really small I showed you we put these sticks in there just for a day like today where it's really windy because you don't want these big stems here you know with this all this leaves uh, structure and then if they start to get ahead on there they get top heavy the winds blowing over there they can blow over so <clears throat> so these sticks here they grow up in between you can see the 
the leaves and the stems, they grow in between there and they keep that from blowing over on a high wind. And that's how I stake them up. Um, and this is, uh, I'll get down to the end there and get the date how long these been growing. I forget how long they've been in the ground. But um, we are, I'm just trying to find you. One, we have some broccoli. Oh, right there. We have a broccoli head that's just forming right there, starting to grow. We've got that one and another one. And here's our um, here's our free tomato plant of seed that started growing from our compost pile. We must have had a tomato seed in there, and it volunteered itself. Um, and so far, knock on wood, it hasn't been pestered too much by the bugs, and it's coming out. And we've got we've got some blooms right here going on so uh, who knows maybe we'll get a, a tomato or two if I can keep the um, stink bugs from getting on it and putting their little nose in it uh, let's see I think this one off yeah this one also has a head of broccoli starting to grow now this is a, a new variety of broccoli I haven't grown this variety yet so um, the plants these plants have a lot thicker stalk and they're taller the other ones that I had were more low to the ground and bushy they were all filled um, and they gave a pretty good size broccoli head of you know you could put your hand around it so these are just coming out so I don't know how big of a head we're going to get on those um, it's going to see but these were from um, Haas tools I got these seeds from uh, and they germinated good I had good germination uh, everything so far seems to be going good um, So I'm going to be looking at two things for the broccoli one to see how big the main head of the broccoli gets And then secondly after we harvest the head a lot of times you get secondary shoots Maybe seven or eight or nine shoots off of each plant. They're side shoots um, That come with tiny smaller broccoli heads, so I'm going to see if this produces that as well And that will determine whether I'm going to regrow this um, in the spring or not and then we have our cabbage <clears throat> our cabbage is doing really well they're looking good these two for whatever reason in the middle they like it right where they're at they're doing good we're already starting to get a nice little head in there you can see the cabbage head is starting to form there's a nice one right there too so um, uh, we've got one over here this head's almost bigger than the ones at the bigger plants over there, but it's a smaller plant in general. But it's doing pretty good. I'm real happy with that. Um, so, yeah, I can't wait to get our first head of cabbage. Just looking, I don't see anything in that one yet. And then this over here is, um, this row right here is our cauliflower. Um, and it's looking similar to the uh, broccoli plants, but I don't see anything in the center of the heads coming up. I was actually surprised to see the broccoli heads were starting to show. But this is cauliflower. This is the first time I've grown cauliflower, so I don't, um, don't really know what to expect from it. And then let's come over here. So this row here is a combination of stuff I had left over. I got a couple cabbages that I planted because that's what I had. Um, <clears throat> this is another, this is either broccoli or cauliflower. I think it's a cauliflower that come over here. And I believe this is the same thing. It's another cauliflower that I had left. And this, this little oddball here um, is come up and growing. So this is my sweet potato. This is where I had sweet potatoes in uh, that I grew that I showed you the amazing results video out of the sweet potatoes. Um, and anyway, I was told in the very beginning when you plant sweet potatoes, plant them in a section where you don't want them to keep growing or you want to only grow sweet potatoes because they get so many finger roots in the ground that they'll just keep coming back and back and back. So. 
I guess it could be a bad thing or a good thing depending on how you look at it. So <clears throat> uh, the bad thing about these are their vines. They grow like crazy and they grow long. So I'm really having to um, keep up with these and keep them trimmed so that they don't outdo my uh, cauliflower plants. I don't want them to go and encapsulate all the nutritional values around them for them trying to grow. So I'm keeping them close, closely trimmed. Now here's where the plant started from right there. It popped up. So you can see I've put the vines growing this way and I'm having them grow along my box here. Now I'm gonna try something. <clears throat> Uh, and this is another experiment for the sweet potatoes, just so I know. So, uh, in the experiment, rather than growing slips like everybody does, I just happened to have two potatoes that um, grew some uh, chits on them from being in the pantry. And I planted those two um, potatoes, and they came out to what you saw in that amazing harvest for the potatoes. So, um, what I'm thinking is... These vines here, <clears throat> let me show you, as they're growing along the ground, I am on each node, and this is what I'm calling a node, where on the main vine, the leaves come out over there, and you can see, I think you can see, yeah, see that, there is a root, see that little white root there? Well, on the nodes, I'm putting, I'm piling this up just like this with soil. And I'm waiting for that node to grow those little white roots down here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to snip this off. Uh, so this would become an independent plant. And I'm going to do the same down the line. As it comes down this way, I'm going to snip this one off here. So this one becomes an independent plant. And I'm going to see on if that works in the place of growing slip. So every time I cut the main stalk, as long as one of the nodes have grown roots into the ground, I'm assuming those roots should turn into sweet potatoes and that would be now an individual plant. So that's my experiment with this one and I'm gonna let you know uh, at the end of the season, well, probably in 90 to 110 days, 120 days, that's what it takes for a sweet potato to grow. Um, I'm going to bring you back and I'm going to show you what I did and see the results of that as well um, and see how that does but because I'm thinking you know a slip when you plant a slip every time you plant a slip those roots that come from that slip create the bigger potatoes so I'm thinking if I cut the vine and make those independent nodes a separate plant and they grow the roots they should be just the same as a slip I'm assuming so anyway we're going to let you know on that one and then here's my second, excuse the bags here I had, the wind came over and blew them all around. Um, um, as you can see like over here, I, I've had them over there and you can see the dead grass. So I'm trying to kill this grass in here and as soon as the grass is nice and dead, I'm going to um, mulch that so that I don't have grass growing between these uh, plants. Uh, so here's my second red potato area that I um, started um, so far very disappointing results um, I planted three here three here three here and three here I planted them this way and this is the only I only got three plants coming up so far three potatoes sprouted so this one for whatever reason is not too doing too good now I did see right here today right there you can see one of them is starting to come up. Um, and I've looked over here, I don't see anything, but um, they might just be late bloomers like this one is. These these have been up, these here have been up a while. This one I just noticed popped through yesterday. So they might be some late bloomers coming up. And then this is another section that I planted. Um, we've got some coming up here nice. We've got, um, I'll show you right here. We've got uh, one, two, we've got another one, three. And that's all I see right now there. And then we got one. You can see how they push up the ground. 
Got another one there and another one there. So this is red as well. And this one over here, I planted golden. I planted some golden ones, but um, nothing is coming up of those yet. So we'll see. All right, and here's, I see my dog has been into my garden again digging. Oh man, he dug up my, both of my little plants I had. I planted some more broccoli here. You can see I got a broccoli plant there and got one there, one there, and one here. She came and dug all that up. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Dogs, they're a pain in the ass. I want to put a fence across. I want to put a fence from the corner of my screen room porch. I want to come across and I want to come to this fence line, just this side of that stump there. I have some chain link fence and I want to put a fence up there with a gate at that end right next to the porch to keep her out of here. Um, that's why I have all these uh, chicken wire things around my raised beds is to keep her out if anybody's wondering why I'm putting those around the raised beds. That's why. All right, let's go over to another section that I'm uh, really pleased with and excited about and that is my carrots my carrots are doing really well so this is my carrot section they're doing good and these are the um, So anyway, they are doing <clears throat> they are doing pretty good. Um, they were planted. Let me see when were they planted. They're 75 day. The Bolero carrots. They're 75 day to maturity, and they were planted on 8-4. So 8-4, 9-4, 10-4. So they're um, 60 days. So they're probably ready to be harvested. But um, I want to do. Um, I want to overwinter these carrots. And then what I did is I have um, two more rows that I sowed, uh, the Bolero carrots, which they're all, I think you can see them, they're all starting to come up now. Um, and then here is uh, another, this is called Long Imperial ones. I planted a row of those. So hopefully by the time we use up all those there, these will be uh, coming good. Now, out of all those onion plants that I had that I started and I planted, these are the two that survived, and I think they're hanging on by a thread. Those two. Uh, so I think I'm done trying to do onions from... I think I'm done trying to do onions from seeds. Uh, I bought um, a package of Adelia onions after all this here that I grew on my porch and they were doing really good. They were all up about this big and then all of a sudden they all just died. So I think I'm just gonna buy sets. Um, I've looked around, nobody has sets in right now locally so I'm gonna try to order them online uh, to get in. So, Cause I want the onions to overwinter grow so I need to get them in the ground by, you know, like no later than December 1st. Uh, I'd like to get them in November uh, in the ground, but right now nobody seems to have the uh, um, onion start. So anyway, I'm looking. And then here's a couple extra uh, broccolis that I had. Since none of this onions and stuff were doing good, I just stuck them here. Here's some more of my zinnias, which these things do great. Um, they're real pretty flowers. They're easy to grow. I just pop off of um, a dead uh, flower from one of the plants over there, open it up, sprinkle it in the ground, cover it with a little bit of dirt, and voila, that's what you see. And then this is my expansion 
of my garden that you saw a video here a couple weeks ago I think I did where um, this was this was all grass and I've taken all the grass out and um, as you can see right now and I was as I was telling you in the video I put all the dead grass or the grass that we pulled up that was a good grass not weeds I put on top um, and I've been uh, throwing leaves you can see my my maple tree right here right next to it is uh, dropping leaves so I've been raking the leaves up and you can see I'm just throwing the leaves on the ground um, and then uh, I'm gonna turn all this stuff in once I get a good amount of leaves built up in this section I'm gonna turn them in now remember this this uh, garden right here the new extension that's going to be uh, I'm only growing it starting in spring and it's going to be my um, spring corn that I'm going to be growing here so I have from now until probably the end of February to get this soil amended it's got a lot of clay in it um, some soft clay and some is like at this this end over here when you try to dig that clay up it's like digging up a rock so um, I've got to dig in a little deeper, put some soil in, but we'll probably be putting 40 or 50 bags of uh, compost in here and turning it up. And I'll probably build the soil up about three or four inches higher than it is now. Um, Cause right now you couldn't grow a carrot in here if you wanted to, it would shoot right down and then bend because of the, gr the ground is so hard. So let's do a, uh, let's do an experiment. I'm going to, take one of these carrots um, they're just about ready as far as their growth period is I'll see let's go let's go in here and you can see you can see the head of the carrot right there these are the boleros they're supposed to be really easy to grow fun to grow so I'm gonna pull up three or four of them because we're gonna have um, we're gonna have some carrots for dinner either tomorrow night or the next night with whatever dinner we make. So um, this will do two re two purposes. It'll let me see how the carrots are doing, and it will also uh, give us a dinner, a side dish for uh, you know upcoming dinner. So let's pull a couple of these out and see what we got. Let's have a drum roll and see what happens. Here it goes. Oh, I broke the carrot. Oh no. Okay, well, that one didn't work too good, but you could see <laughs> I broke the carrot, but it's not it's not doing too good. They're supposed to grow about supposed to grow about 6 inches, 6 to 8 inches. Let's do another one. Let's do one over here. See. All right, you can see that's a funky one there. Hmm. All right, let's do another one. I'm wondering. Yeah, see the ground might be too hard. You see how they're turning? I think the ground is too hard for them to um, to grow into, so they're they're getting funky. Well, that's not too good. Let's pull a couple more because that ain't going to be enough for dinner. I just want to see what's going on. Yeah, so that one, that one didn't do anything either. Hmm. That's disappointing. Now that's what happened in my last carrots too. Is like they didn't, they were all deformed, didn't get very good. Okay, so now here's the thing too. If you remember, people told me not to, this is something that you you can't transplant. You're supposed to direct sow, and I transplanted all these, but they look like they're doing really well. So, uh, as far as the tops go, but you can see the roots. The roots are not doing very well. 
so I did put um, sowed the bolero carrots in over there from seed um, so that's a good indication of an experiment to see if it makes a difference so they grow beautiful tops maybe I didn't have enough um, bone meal and some uh, phosphate in the ground in order for them to grow but I'm gonna put a couple, couple more up um, see if there's go at the other end see if those are any different it's getting it's starting to get dark and I got to water my garden let's pull this guy up let's see yeah see they're all funky I think the um, I don't know when you feel the when you feel the dirt it's very fluffy and light so I don't know I don't know if it comes if that's because I did uh, I did transplant but yeah well, all right that's enough I'm, so the both ends they're about the same Yeah, that's very disappointing. Very disappointing. Well, I don't know. We'll see. They might. Uh, they might eat okay. Let's try one more and then that's it that's all I'm gonna pull up and let these finish growing yeah all right guys so if you guys grow carrots and you're seeing this you kind of know the background I grew them in a seed starting tray and then I transplanted them and they did well you can see the tops but the bottom so um, what did I do wrong leave them in the comments let me know if there's something you saw me do in here that uh, that I did wrong uh, but we will see the ones that I um, did in sowed in the ground we're gonna see I might have to uh, do a little bit more research in the carrots there's one video I watched. I might go back to that guy. He uses basically nothing but peat moss and perlite. And he builds the whole ground up from there. And you can put your whole hand all the way down 12 inches. That's like putting like in butter. So maybe that's what I need to do. I need a looser soil. And sow them in the ground. Okay, guys. That's the end. It's getting dark. I got to water. I got to water this... Um, garden in before I go to bed uh, I don't like watering it at night I like watering it in the morning but I got to be to work early in the morning so I will not have time to do that so um, I'm gonna sign off thank you for watching the video I hope you like the progress of the garden uh, most of it's doing really well and I'm really happy with it uh, until we see you next time take care God bless don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up on this uh, video most appreciative and until we see you next time, happy gardening, guys. We'll see you on the next one.